So last time we, so we are trying to study Burle Camp algorithm as a reduction strategy. And uh, so first thing that we did is to define resultant for two polynomials, what is uh, this uh, invariant polynomial called resultant. And we showed that, uh, we showed this lemma that if GCD, if A and B are co-prime, over the function field x1, so we are thinking of AB as a univariate in x2 over fx1. If they are co-prime, then uh, this Bizu identity ua plus vb will give you resultant. Okay, in other words, resultant is in the ideal of a comma b, and remember that resultant is a is a univariate in x1. Okay, it eliminates x2. So we showed that. Any questions about? this. So, this is what we have done. So, we have shown that resultant is in the ideal of A, B and we also are uh, degree limited as, uh, as in the Euclid algorithm case. So, let us write it down in terms of the ideal. So, resultant is in the ideal a comma b over bivariate polynomial ring and it is also univariate okay so resultant is a univariate in x1 and it is in the ideal that's the property uh, so, when A and B are co-prime over the function field, then resultant is in the ideal we have seen. And what happens if A and B share a factor, they are not co-prime? Why is the resultant then in this? Yeah, so in that case, uh, resultant is 0, right. So, in both the cases, it is in the ideal. This is without any assumption. And uh, the earlier statement was for univariates so for univariates resultant is in the ideal is also in the ideal a comma b intersection f okay because for univariates uh, if the univariates are co-prime then the resultant is non zero it's actually 1 you can take it as 1 why is 1 in the ideal a comma b well because a comma b are co prime so actually a comma b will generate everything right so this is happening over fx uh, so when a b co co prime this is correct and when a and b share a factor then the resultant is zero and 0 is in the ideal ok. So, so this is the green thing is for univariate and the above fact is for bivariate they look similar is that clear. So, this is something to remember and uh, what is the degree of the resultant? So, degree of the univariate resultant, resultant which is a univariate polynomial in x1, this is at most so remember that it was uh, the matrix given by the linear system to find u and v in Euclid algorithm. Right, so, it is related to uh, 
it's the the basically the matrix dimensions are sum of the degrees of u plus degree of v but then that you will come when you compute the determinant you will have to take the product so it's kind of quadratic so it is uh, degree of b with respect to x2 times degree of a with respect to x1 plus the symmetric thing so we'll use the bound twice degree of a times degree of b okay, so if you if you exactly write down the matrix and check the determinant degree you will get this bound it's basically product of the degrees of ab uh, which is the total degree so degree with respect to both x1 and x2 all variables product of that and this factor of 2 okay so resultant is a we say that resultant is a low degree polynomial it is univariate uh, and it is contained in this bivariate ideal okay so that finishes uh, the discussion on resultant next thing we will do is the reduction of factorization so say you have an algorithm uh, that can factorize polynomials uh, over prime fields fp okay how can you use this algorithm to factorize polynomials in the extension right and this is non trivial because uh, uh polynomial which was irreducible in the prime field when you go to an extension it can easily reduce right so in the prime field you did not need to factor the polynomial but in the final in the extension you will actually have to find roots so it is highly non trivial that these two things are actually related on the other hand if you can factorize over fq can you factorize over fp why is that can you just have to multiply some factor exactly so fq is a bigger field so if you can find factorization over fq then to find factorization over fp you just have to cluster the conjugate factors okay so if you for example if you can factorize over complex then you can factorize over reals because the conjugate of square root of minus 1 is minus of square root minus 1 so you just have to cluster the conjugates and multiply them so you get a factor in the lower field so uh, fp to fq is actually trivial but fq to fp is non trivial right so the non trivial thing we'll do and then the two will become equivalent over the finite field fq so you are given a polynomial fx and uh, this factors into so recall all these uh, results we had about factorization over fq right so we can by pre processing steps we can assume that fx uh, factors as equi degree irreducibles so it factors into k 
equidegree co prime irreducibles in f q x right so this is the setting we are in uh, so now we want to find these equidegree factors irreducible factors given a subroutine to factor f p polynomials right this is our goal so that is what now we will show so we will show that factoring over f q reduces in uh, deterministic polynomial time this is not prime p but polynomial time p the complexity class it reduces into factoring over f p okay where q is a, a power of p q is p square p cube so on so we'll give a deterministic polynomial time reduction from this first problem to the second problem thus making the two equivalent so so further recall burle camp algorithm right so burle camp algorithm will give you a g such that so degree of g is less than the degree of f which we are calling d so g is uh, degree is between 1 and d minus 1 and uh, g raised to p is g mod f right so this we were able to find by linear system solving a non trivial g such that this happens so after so this was step 1 essentially of burle camp algorithm step 2 is was that uh, you will then take gcd of g minus alpha with f for all alpha constants numbers 0 to p minus 1 right so that was the part which uh, was uh, expensive if p is large so we will actually modify that so the second step which was uh, taking gcd of fx with g of x minus y right varying y 0 to p minus 1 so that we will now not do Uh, instead we will actually say that look at the resultant and call this so think of gcd taking uh, taking gcd of these two bivariates why think of why is a formal variable okay do not fix y to a number and uh, so you want you are interested in gcd of these two things with respect to x so analogously you should take resultant of these two when you take resultant this becomes a univariate in y right so let's call this hy so you compute this so whatever you have learnt about resultant using that you can compute it in uh deterministic polynomial time and uh, now what is the connection of this with factors of f 
what do you know so in the context of perle camp algorithm you know that some con some number y would have worked and given a non trivial gcd right which means that that number let's say alpha what can you say about h of alpha right so those all those good alphas are actually roots of h and they are numbers right so here you can call the subroutine that factors over fp so if you have a subroutine if you have algorithm that factors over fp it will factor h and it will give you the alpha and then you happily compute uh, step 2 of burle camp right that is the fast algorithm so that basically is the proof so by the properties of resultant we know that an fp root of h always satisfies this and this fp root i'm calling alpha and actually this is for uh, any fp root let me clear this so any fp root uh, alpha of hy will share a non trivial gcd with f uh, g minus alpha will share a non trivial gcd with f and any alpha for which the gcd is non trivial has to be a root of h right it's if and only if nothing is lost in h so we can make this so in fact okay so any questions about this this is the main uh, crux of the proof right that you observe gcd is non one if and only if uh, uh, alpha is a root of the resultant so you compute the resultant and factor it this is the constructive proof so instead of uh, searching for alpha simply factorize uh this polynomial so you are only interested in the roots of h right not uh, quadratic factors or cubic factors linear factors so you can extract them by taking gcd with this right y raised to p minus y contains all the roots and it is also efficiently uh, reducible mod h so you first reduce it by repeated squaring mod h then take the gcd call this h1 so now h1 only has roots okay it doesn't have any other quad any other irreducible factor so on this h1 you apply your subroutine each one completely splits and has good alpha 
as roots. Okay. So, one thing here is uh, what can you say about the degree of H and H1? So, first what is the degree of H? So, degree of H is, uh, is not, it is not more than 2D square. In fact, it is not more than, uh, yeah, not D square. I mean, we had some factor of 2. So, it is something like 2D times D minus 1. But you should also note that this situation is very special here. Uh, y appears only in one place. Uh, yeah, so actually if you analyze it, it will come out to be D. 2D square is that easy <coughs> bound. Uh, this will actually come out to be D. So, let us note that. It is not very important, but good to know. So, it is not 2D square, but much smaller. It is actually D, uh, at most D. And then when you uh, further take GCD, uh, it cannot increase. So, degree of H1 is also at most D. Right? So, these are all low degree polynomials. So, every step here you can actually efficiently compute. Right? In deterministic polynomial time, maybe even uh, slightly cubic time you can do all this. This is all. Uh, this is all happening in cubic time, sub cubic time. In fact, all the steps. are doable in polynomial in uh, d log q. Time. Okay, so, Burleigh-Camp uh, had a factor of p also. So, that is now gone. Okay, this is really, this is truly polynomial in the input size. Input size was d log q. Uh, d many monomials in f and uh, each coefficient log qubits. Right. So, it was really d log q and you are doing everything polynomial in that. Any questions? So, this is the reduction. Uh, so, Burleigh-Camp is an algorithm that is practical when p is small, characteristic is small. Uh, even when it is not small, if it is very large, like 1000 bits or whatever, uh, Burleigh camp is actually an efficient reduction. It reduces uh, field extension factorization to prime field factorization. Sir, where is that thing getting handled? Like you said, uh, uh, polynomial may be irreducible in prime field, mm -hmm. but not in yeah, then H1 will be degree, uh, H1 will be 1. So, nobody says that H1 uh, is degree 1 or more. H1 just may, just may just be 1. No factorization happens. In fact, uh, because of this reason, degree of H and H1 will differ. Yeah. Yeah, those things are dependent on uh, f. So, we are only giving upper bounds here. So, this gives you the corollary. About f p root finding. So, in uh, this business of uh, polynomial factorization over finite fields, uh, you now have to solve only one problem, which is uh, finding fp roots. Okay, you don't want to, you don't need to find uh, quadratic irreducible factors, cubic irreducible factors, and so on. So you only want to find 
only need to find linear factors which is equivalent to finding roots and roots are remember they are only numbers from 0 to p minus 1 right so if you can just find uh, fp roots then you can solve everything because uh, of this reduction in this reduction ultimately h1 only has roots and they are all distinct so that is that corollary we note that uh, for polynomial factoring over fq it suffices to factor an f which is in fpx that completely splits into distinct roots okay so completely splits that is an highly non trivial thing and uh, distinct roots okay so from this point on we can uh, forget about uh, factor finding and we can only talk about uh, fp roots finding right because any other problem can be solved using this with uh, minimal overhead that's fq in the factor yeah that's true yes and we always take p to be prime any questions right so that is the state of the art of berle camp algorithm and all its connections uh, but this has still not solved our uh, very basic prob problem of uh, finding fp roots when p is very large right that is actually you will see in in future applications that this is a very uh, re realistic practical problem that you have a polynomial over a prime field and you want to find a root for example you may want to find square root of a number when it exists right you are given a number a modulo p and you want to take square root of a mod lo p so either it will exist or not exist which you will be able to check but when it exists you want to find it and uh, that you have you still have not solved that problem right so so now we will see an algorithm that solves uh, those problems so for exponentially large p so a new idea is needed now it's very old fashioned okay and we will actually need uh, randomization okay so this uh, essentially uh, one fundamental algorithm and it is called cantor's zasenhaus it was given by cantor and zasenhaus so we'll call it cz yeah so we have to uh, develop few concepts in uh, prime field before we can describe this so let us 
prove some basic properties first of prime fields. So, we will assume that that p is odd, p is an odd prime. Why can we assume that? What happens if p is not an odd prime? Then the only possibility is p is equal to 2 and what do you do then? 0, 1. No, 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 no. p is the characteristic. f q can be anything above, above f 2. Yeah, so th all those problems are already solved by Burle camp, right. So, p equal to 2, any q, any q which is a power of 2, that key, th th those factorizations you already know, efficient al algorithm. So, those you do not have to solve. Yeah, okay. And yeah, when you look at h1, then h1 is only, uh, it can only have 0 or 1 value, correct. Yeah, and then on top of that, there is whole Bur Bur Burlick and machinery to take care of uh, factorization. So, so we'll take p to be large, so definitely odd, and uh, f as before. So, we have already pre-processed f and we are at the point where f just has uh, f p roots distinct and no other factors. So, uh, so you look at two distinct roots of f, let us say alpha 1, alpha 2, okay, and uh, two, so we somehow want to separate them. So factorization is basically separating the roots, right. So, that separation we will do by transforming f. And the way we will transform is the simplest way possible, which is by linear shift. So, if alpha 1 and alpha 2 are roots of f, what are the roots of g? Alpha 1 minus a and alpha 2 minus a, right. So, alpha 1 alpha 2 are, have been perturbed by a. Right. So, when you perturb these two different elements alpha 1, alpha 2, maybe their properties become different and you can distinguish such that uh, their roots uh, ok. Let me be specific such that the roots of G have different properties and the specific property I am looking for is quad called uh, quadratic residuosity. So, what is the meaning of quadratic residuosity? whether a number is a square or not, right. It is a, if it is a square, it is called a quadratic residue. Otherwise, it is called a quadratic non-residue. So, alpha 1, alpha 2 were the roots of f. For g, they become alpha 1 minus a, alpha 2 minus a. And uh, the question is whether the one of them is a square, the other is not, ok. So, we want to make the residuosity different by choosing an A. Do you know ways to check res residuosity? How do you check this? Gauss. Uh, yes, Gauss's law is complicated. Uh, something simpler than that we will use. We will use this thing, uh, A to the P minus 1 or alpha to the P minus 1 by 2. You can also take GCD with X to P minus X. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that is, uh, that is the same as alpha to the P minus 1 by 2. So, so, 
So, we show that alpha is a square or oh, let me shorten this as q r. Okay, so, we will alpha is a square or a q r. in F p, if and only if alpha to the p minus 1 by 2 is 1 mod p. Okay, so, we will show that uh, it is very easy to test whether a number is a square or equivalently a number is a quadratic residue. Okay, so, all you have to do is uh, raise it to p minus 1 by 2 p is odd. So, p minus 1 by 2 is an integer. So, you just multiply alpha that many times and get 1. So, what is the other value you could have gotten? Yeah, y, y only plus minus 1. Because alpha to the p minus 1 is 1. Exactly. So, note that by Fermat's little theorem alpha to the p minus 1 was 1 and this is the square root of 1 and in a field uh, there are only two possible square roots both of them you know plus minus 1 right. So, this value could only be plus 1 or minus 1. Uh, so, we are actually going with plus 1 and when you get minus 1 then all those alphas are quadratic non residues or non squares. So, it is a very simple test. What is the proof? Uh, you can give multiple similar proofs. Uh, the easiest one is you use the cyclic nature of FP star. So, let G be a generator, uh, G is also a polynomial, let me not use G. So, let uh, gamma generate F p star multiplicatively. And uh, so, then you can express alpha as gamma to the i, right. Actually, one side is quite simple, you do not need gamma. So, the first side if you want to show forward implication. So, suppose alpha is a square beta square, then what can you say about alpha to the p minus 1 by 2? So, that is beta to the p minus 1, which is 1, right. So, the forward implication is clear. Uh, RHS has to be 1. Let, let us now look at the converse. We will need gamma there. So, say alpha to the p minus 1 by 2 is 1, which means that gamma to the i is 1, which means? Yeah, so what is the order of gamma? So, p minus 1 has to divide it. Because, I mean, no number below p minus 1 um, essentially, yeah, since the multiplicative order of gamma is p minus 1, gamma raised to anything, if gamma raised to m is 1, then m has to be divisible by p minus 1 by the order. So, so let me write it that way. So, okay, p minus 1 is the order of gamma and that has to divide i p minus 1 by 2. Okay. This is in fact if and only if, which implies that i is even. Okay, this is also if and only if. So, uh, 
yeah, which means that alpha is a square. So, this in fact is all you needed. Okay, this is a proof for both sides. Uh, <coughs> so, kind of this uh, discrete log of alpha, the right, discrete log of alpha with respect to gamma is i. This i has to be even. Okay, i is even if and only if uh, alpha is to p minus 1 by 2 is 1, which is then equivalent to saying that alpha is a square. Any questions? So, in the literature in number theory, this uh, plays a very important role alpha to the p minus 1 by 2. Okay, this is a very important uh, function of alpha. So, think of the finite, the prime field being fixed to f, uh, fixed by p. And then this is just a function in alpha there from fp to fp. In fact, this is from fp to what is the image? Yeah, this is from fp to 0 plus minus 1. It takes th only three values. And it has these nice properties that it is multiplicative, right? So, this function for alpha, this function for beta, and then this function for alpha beta, those three things are related by multiplication. So, this is a very important, uh, so this is a character of uh, FP, and uh, it is called, it is denoted uh, also by this notation alpha divided by alpha by P and bracket it is denoted by this symbol and it is called uh, Lejeune symbol. Okay, so, this is the Lejeune symbol. It is a character function of uh, this group F p star multiplicative. Yeah. So, yeah, sometimes uh, we may use this notation alpha by p as a shorthand. Uh, when p is not a prime number, let us say p is a general composite, then also this symbol is defined. It has a different name. So, that we will use in the future. Okay. So, for now, just uh, this is just a basic uh, thing we have introduced. Okay, so as you vary alpha, how many times is this symbol plus one? P minus one by two, right? So around half. So around half the time this is plus one, around half it is minus one, and it is a famous conjecture, or uh, in a way also proved that uh, this is a random phenomena. Okay, so, when you look at uh, very, very large p, so as you are going from alpha equal to 1 to alpha equal to p minus 1, the way this plus 1 minus 1 distribution is coming, this distribution, uh, this distribution is nearly random and uh, this is proved by proving the Riemann hypothesis over finite field. Okay, so, this randomness statement is actually Riemann hypothesis statement. There is a proof for that. But here we only need this probability estimate. So, probability over alpha says that alpha is a square. Uh, let me make it a fp star will never take alpha 0. Probability that this is a square is uh, is what p minus 1 by 2 
divided by p minus 1. Uh, yeah, okay, maybe let us go back to f p, p which is less than half. Okay, so, oh, but that is not correct. Then I have to take p minus 1 by 2 plus 1. So, over f p star uh, it is half r squares and half r non squares. Okay, this is so we note this. Uh, proof of this is simply uh, you write alpha as gamma to the i, gamma is the generator before as before. Uh, and note that uh, alpha is square if and only if i is even right and i is even for half the time 0 to uh, 0 to p minus 1 yeah actually 0 to p minus 2 so this i actually runs uh, kind of mod p minus 1. So, here it is going from 0 to p minus 2. Correct. So, this p minus 2 is odd. So, the, in this interval you have half events and half odds. Right. That is the distribution. So, why you are taking p minus 2? Okay? Yeah, because uh, gamma's multiplicative order is p minus 1. So, here the arithmetic happens uh, mod p minus 1, this is important. Uh, this, this mod p in the base changes to mod p minus 1 in the exponent. Yeah, so with this understand, with these properties, now we can actually see Cantor's Asanos easily. Cantor's Asanos is directly based on these ideas. So, the idea is that you pick a random element A. Okay, this notation means that uh, you are picking A from 0 to p minus 1 by flipping coins. So, how many coins will you have to flip to f uh, discover A? Right. So, A has uh, or in fact elements in F p require log p bits, right. Each bit will cost uh, a single tossing of a coin. So, A will require log p random bits, which is not too much. If you have a coin, you can flip it those many times. So, then you will be, you would have picked A. So, then it is expected that the roots of uh, okay i'm making it f of x minus a now let me change before so the roots of f of x minus a have different Uh, residuosity. Right. So, say uh, original roots were alpha 1, alpha 2, new roots are alpha 1 plus a and alpha 2 plus a. Uh, and say these two roots have uh, opposite residuosity. Okay, one is a square, the other is a non-square. Uh, you know how to test for square, right? How do you test that? So 
So, you will take G C D with x to the p minus 1 by 2 minus 1. Uh, so, because of this uh, property that you saw before alpha to the p minus 1 by 2 minus 1, right? you know that any uh, square has to be a root of this and this has exactly p minus 1 by 2 roots. So, the roots of these actually are clustering all the squares. So, if you take the GCD of this with f of x minus a, then alpha 1 plus a will come out uh, if and only if it is a square. So, if you can uh, distinguish alpha 1 plus a from alpha 2 plus a by residuosity, right, then they will be separated. So, f will be factored. I mean f of x minus a will be factored, but since you know a, f is also factored. Is that clear? Uh, yeah, repeating will not help probably then. So, let me write say alpha 1 plus a, alpha 2 plus a or you can only look at one root actually, it's two are not important. So, say alpha plus a is a root is a 0 of uh, this f x minus a. and say it is a square, so, so do you see that alpha plus a will be a root of uh, the G C D also. Right. So, the square the roots of uh, the zeros of f of x minus a which are squares they will all be clustered out when you take G C D. So, if in f of x minus a there are two kinds of roots or zeros then you factor it right. So, the your goal is to pick an a such that f of x minus a has uh, different kinds of roots. So, at least uh, one root should be there which is a square and at least one root should be there which is a non square. If all of them are square, I mean this game you could have played already with f x. So, in f x if, uh, so if there is a root which is a square and there is a root which is a non square, both of them are there then when you take G C D with uh, x to the p minus 1 by 2 minus 1, f would factorize. So, actually the bad case is when f has either only squares as roots or only non squares as roots, in which case you will shift by a and try to make them different. If they are different then G C D factors. So, that is the algorithm. So, Cantor's Asanos algorithm is very simple to implement. So, you are given uh, in the input a polynomial in f p x of degree d and it is pre processed. So, all the usual assumptions hold in the output you want to give a factor. Okay. And it essentially has only one step. So, this one step is uh, output the G C D of f of x minus a with uh, x to the p 
minus 1 by 2 minus 1. Uh, okay, this is a factor of f of x minus a. Let me slightly change this. So, I mean, if you can take GCD of f of x minus a with that polynomial, then you can as well take GCD of f with x plus a to the p minus one by two. So that is what we are taking, and uh, whatever answer you get, you output it. Okay. So if your choice of a was lucky, uh, then uh, in f of x minus a there will be two roots which have opposite residuosity. Okay, and with that luck, uh, GCD will factorize f. Okay, so there is only one step. So let us let us analyze this. So in the analysis, I'll prove both the things uh, because it is not clear whether such an a even exists. Right? If it doesn't exist, then random choice will have no meaning. I mean, it will not help. Uh, second issue is about efficiency. So suppose A exists, but only one or two A's exist. So then by random choices, you will never find them. It's impossible to find them, right? So at this point, both the existence and the density is unclear. Uh, so we'll, we'll prove both these things actually in one step in the analysis. So let, uh, alpha 1 different from alpha 2 be the zeros of fx, obviously everything in fp. So this is the notation I use for zeros. And uh, so then this means that alpha 1 plus a different from alpha 2 plus a, both of them are zeros of x minus a. And uh, suppose they have the same residuosity. So what is the equation for that? Alpha 1 plus a to the p minus 1 by 2 is the same. Right? So you when you multiply it p minus 1 by 2 times, you get the same sign plus minus 1. Uh, think of this as uh, an equation in A, unknown A. What is the degree of the equation? Minus 1 because the highest power of A will also cancel out. So view this as, so it is an equation in unknown A of degree p minus 3 by 2. Now for a for an equation of degree p minus 3 by 2, how many roots can be there? Which is very small. So this means that number of bad A's is less than equal to p minus 3 by 2. Right, which means that uh, number of A's that discriminate alpha 1 from alpha 2 or let us be precise. So, number of A's for which uh,
one feels is a lot. Right? So, that is Uh, yeah, we can. We can also consider a equal to zero. It will not change anything. So number of bad A's uh, above is limited by the degree. So number of good A's, which means that uh, they are able to discriminate alpha one plus A from alpha two plus A via residuosity. Right, that is uh, p plus three by two, which is at least half. So more than half of the A's are good. Right, so not only do they exist, their density is also 50%. Uh, now it doesn't matter actually where they lie. In this interval 0 to p minus 1, it does not matter where they lie. If you randomly pick with more than 50% chance, it is a good A. Sir, can you say again once uh, why the degree is p minus 3 by 2? Oh, why the degree is p minus 1 by so what is the degree of A in, in, in the LHS? P minus 1 by 2? And the A raised to P minus 1 by 2 term, both sides cancel, so it is one less. <coughs> it, it isn't an import, important point, I mean it is even with P minus 1 by 2 degree, you get essentially the same thing. That density of uh, good A's is, is half. So, what you deduce is that probability over A in FP that the HX that you are outputting, HX is non-trivial, given that F factors, I mean that is already in the pre-processing, so obviously F factors. So, let me not even say that this is more than half. Okay. So, probability that uh, for a random A, your Cantor's Zesanos algorithm will factor F, uh, this is at least half. And uh, time complexity is clearly uh, polynomial in log P. In fact, you can even calculate it other than the pre-processing step. Uh, this is just GCD, so it is again quadratic time or slightly more in log p, uh, in D log p. So, this is a very fast, uh, very practical algorithm. In fact, one of the only algorithms useful in practice to factor uh, any polynomial over any finite field, right. Yeah, we can, we can write the time also. So, this is uh, for repeated squaring. I mean again, uh, uh, this uh, GCD computation is possible only because of uh, repeated squaring. Uh, this is a very special polynomial x plus a to the p minus 1 by 2. It is exponential degree, but then it is a single exponential. So, you can compute it by repeated squaring mod f. So, you square, then you divide by f, then you again square, then again divide by f. So, that will go on for log p steps. So, there are log p multiplications and then division and then GCD. So, log p times uh, linear in d log p plus the eventual gcd is uh, o tilde d log p so which is o tilde d log square p okay so it is merely quadratic in log p in d it is actually linear time right so it's a very fast algorithm although there were these pre processing steps which were expensive it pre-processing took around cubic. That is for the GCD. The D log P after the plus is for GCD. 
the the first one is for uh, reducing uh, exponential degree second polynomial this x plus a to the p minus 1 by 2 <coughs> that is the dominant uh, complexity okay yeah so so if you look at the overall factoring algorithm overall factoring takes around uh, there is this d raised to omega uh in, in the pre processing it was actually d cube but i mentioned that if you use uh, fast matrix multiplication methods you can actually make it faster so this will be something like d raised to 2.4 or 2.41 and there is there are obviously log q terms uh, i forget maybe you will do in square so this much time okay it is sub cubic if you want to so when you combine all these components of factorization this irreducibility testing uh, then burley camp and then cantor sonos overall uh there are improvements to this so kedlaya and umans few years ago gave a sub quadratic time method so its time its uh, time complexity is something like d to the 1.5 log q plus d log square q okay so this is uh, instead of d to the 2.41 this is d to the 1.5 okay it is sub quadratic it is still not linear time but uh, this is the best known so polynomial factoring from the very beginning over finite fields from scratch you can solve in this much time okay any questions is it the same amount of random probably when you randomness is only from the picking of random points in fp uh so that is in too much it is the other uh, linear algebra steps etc which is costly okay